So at Keller Williams, we talk a lot about the one thing. What is the one thing that solo agents should get off their plate? Well, I would definitely say absolutely the conveyancing. And in this day and age, you know, if you think about it, uh, well, first of all, KW, we talk about red light, green light. You know, you don't spend money that you don't have. And yet every business requires capital to start it. So a lot of agents get themselves into trouble when they join this business because they don't have three to six months of expenses built up in their savings account. You know, so then they start making uh, decisions based on scarcity. And then that's where the enjoyment of the business is low and the, the stress level is high. If you approach it like you're starting a new business, which you are, and have some capital in the bank to, you know, tide you over until your first settlement, and you have some money in the bank that you can apply towards business services in this day and age. Yeah. Like social media, if I were getting into this business new, I would absolutely need to leverage that because it is not my strong suit. I don't enjoy it at all. So, you know, anytime you can invest money, like I talk about things that are investments, things that are expenses and things that are magic pills. So a magic pill is like buying Zillow leads that, you're gonna to have to learn the skills to convert clients. So you might as well just work with the people you already know. You know, an investment, I pay for Mojo Dialer every month because it's it's enhancing my efficiency. With the listing coordination, like we're, you might not have the sales yet, you know, to hire a, you to do a social media campaign yet, uh, just yet, but if you have that money saved in the bank to build your business, that could be a great place to start having somebody who has a professional background, you know, to start helping you along that social media pathway to get the clients. And that's really the number one thing as agents that we need to do is get in front of people to talk to them about real estate. The five jobs of a real estate agent are to set the appointment, go on the appointment, follow up on the appointment if you didn't get the paperwork signed. And sometimes when, even when you set the appointment, you don't go on it, like they cancel and then you have to follow up, follow up, follow up. So it's set, go follow up negotiate contracts because you're going to sign a listing or buyer agency paperwork with that seller or buyer you're also going to then negotiate a contract contract for an offer and then script practice and and dialogue so practicing those conversations so nowhere in there is marketing <laughs> nowhere in there is conveyancing so a new agent their one thing really needs to be on that first domino which is to set appointments. So learn the conversations to set the appointment. And then as you start to build traction, then you're building out your listing you know, conversations and then you're building out your follow-up. Well, your follow-up you should be doing all along. And then you're, then you're learning you know, how to really negotiate contracts. So focus on that first domino and then move along the path as your momentum builds. Got it. No yeah. administrative. <laughs> no administrative. I don't think you got into sales to be an administrative assistant to yourself. They say, if you don't have a housekeeper, you are your own housekeeper. If you don't you know, have a landscaper, you are your own landscaper. So you always got to think, can I do this? Uh, can I pay somebody to do this more cheaply? And in the beginning, you're not making money. So you might be thinking, well, I'm paying them $25 an hour. My hourly wage right now is zero. Well, it's like, well, if they could do what you could do in one hour and it's going to take you two hours and they've got the skill level to do it better than you, that could be the equivalent of four hours. Couldn't you do invest that four hours in learning more skills and learning your job? Because honestly, you can forget everything you learn in licensing school. They don't teach you how to build a business. They don't really teach you how to negotiate a contract. So focus your learning on you know, your job and let other people do their job, which they're better at. Yeah, and the beauty of the concierge program is it's not like they're hiring a full-time marketing person. Yeah. It's not like they're taking the time and energy to hire, train, pay a salary, benefits. The marketing concierge, I mean, the agents can be as involved or as little involved as they'd like. They yeah. can become a member. They can buy our packages and they can shop service by service. There's a lot of benefit to having a marketing concierge versus a full-time marketing person as it's less of an investment and it goes a long way. I know what you're saying, Erin, is true because there are, there are people that have built businesses at KW on hiring for you. 
because the hiring process, if done well, is a full-time job. As soon as you take your eye off of your lead generation and, and building your business, you're slowing down and then you're starting to wonder, can I even hire this, can I even afford this person? <laughs> you know, because maybe the deals aren't coming in as quickly because you took your foot off that lever. So you're absolutely right to hire somebody. It's the same thing like joining a team. To hire somebody that works for you exclusively, it takes a lot of time and skill you know, and know-how. So to outsource it is brilliant. Absolutely.